Show action. That's always good. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone out there. Hi. Get off Facebook. What? It's better for your mood. What? I mean, watch us on Instagram. Watch us on Twitter. Just the, <laughs> the presence of the Facebook logo like increases people's rage by like 15 to 20%. <laughs> nice. Nice. No, it's got an hour. When it goes an hour, it shuts off automatically. That's all Instagram allows you. Stupid Instagram. <laughs> Silly Instagram. I mean, it wasn't that long ago they only let you upload seven seconds of video, so... Yeah, hey, to get an hour is really <laughs> good. <laughs> you think with the power of Facebook, right? Right, we're doing... You know, we're well, already on Facebook Live here, are you, and... Yeah, I guess Facebook's not the worst. Hanging out. Do you have the monitor, the other monitor on, Sorg? Uh, it will be on in a moment. Heard. It's like a snow globe out there. It's beautiful. What's that guy making over there? Tacos. tacos. Nice. That's tacos. Las, Las Palmas. Probably the best tacos in the city. That's what I've heard. The face meat is the best meat. Just FYI. Like oh, cheeks? Cheeks. Yeah, tongue. the cheek meat. Mm-hmm. I usually just go and say, face me. <laughs> you just lost 10 vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like vegetarians. Um, is, is this a show for them? I, I, I like vegetarian food. We, we got some delicious black bean and corn salad up there, which I think is vegan, actually. Yeah, vegan. So, you know, meet that side of the street, vegan this side of the street. Oh, don't, don't, don't loop that. I'm not looping it. Let's turn the sound <laughs> off. All my notifications coming up. Like, Sorg is watching with you. Misty's oh. watching with you. Yeah. You're watching with you. Yeah, all the <laughs> Technology, when your cell phone lights up like a Christmas tree, when you do one thing. Mm. I don't know about you, Gene. For the last several years I've known you, you your cell phone goes off quite often yeah it's uh it's constantly in vibrate mode though so i keep it in my back pocket yeah you, you don't put it in the front pocket anymore it's still in the front pocket <laughs> <laughs> uh-oh oh i can go hoodie it's all right it's all right it's gonna be a little different let's see if i can swap this up We didn't talk wardrobe at all. No. <laughs> hey, you know, there's no green screen, so. It's a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Nice snow coming out. It's a nice Sunday to not have to be anywhere. I hear that. Now people can hear me online. That's good. I gotcha. Hey, there it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I'm not on this show, but. I'm just a. Last minute. Yeah. This is the raw stuff they get on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> they get it raw on Facebook. That's how we like it. All right. Whoa. I did not do titles. So, <laughs> but this is a podcast. Right on. We should be good. All right. Um, I'm ready when you are. If you're ready, we're ready. You guys ready? Ready. All okay. right. All right, everyone out there in uh, good old Facebook land, on the interwebs, and all the fun th ways you can watch us and listen to us. This is Steve. We got Matt over here, my co-host. You can actually see us now. We're visual instead of just listening to us. We also have our uh, good friend, uh, Mr. Uh, Eugene Mangrum uh, from Penn Brewery. Uh, he is the food and beverage director and a uh, wonderful sponsor that we have here this morning, live in Beachview at Sorgatron Media. Uh, Gene's brought some good beer, man. You always like travel with beer, which is good. Don't leave home without it. Exactly. It's a good thing. I mean, Kaiser Pills. What do you want to tell us about the Kaiser Pills? It's a eminently craveable, drinkable session beer. Um, Northern German style Czech pills, if that makes any sense at all. It does. 
Um, but I have people come from all over the world for it. It's delicious. Nick's doing a great job of making beer. Nick is a hell of a brewer down there. He does a great job. The Kaiser Pills, like I said, when you get a nice taste on this, you're going to get this nice uh, instant crisp flavor in the front, a good beer flavor in the middle, and that little bit of a hop bite on the back. Um, just tasty and delicious. Perfect for breakfast. Yes, it is. And it's and we said it's a session, so we can drink this all day here throughout the Super Bowl and not get too banged up on it. All day. All day. What is it, Gene? Your line is uh if if you're not if you don't drink before and at eleven before uh eleven AM you can't say you can't you drank say all, you drank all day if you don't start before noon. That is true. Um I brought us a little nip of bourbon. We have a nice little sipper here for us. Matt, how are you how are you doing? You came off a nice little work stretch, uh doing some sports. What'd you like this weekend? Mm, well, let's see, all the local basketball teams lost. Yes, badly. So, yeah, so not really that much. Penn's lost last night. Um, the game before that, I enjoyed. Um, I there was a, the Washington Capitals game Friday night. Didn't that actually see it. Didn't see it, but I heard that they uh, beat the Capitals seven to four. There was a couple fights in that game. There was Malkin had a hat trick. It was very nice. Good. Pens. We got a lot of Penn stuff coming up. We'll, and Matt and I will cover that a lot later. Today we're here for the big thing, which is Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl Sunday. Who does not love football? Who does not love Super Bowl? Except now that we have the Patriots again, and again. we have the Eagles. And the Eagles. So rooting for the Eagles is kind of like having your mother-in-law take your brand-new Corvette and drive off a cliff. Rooting for the Eagles is super easy, given the circumstances. Yes, because it's the Cheatriots. You've got, yeah, we don't want the Patriots to win another Super Bowl. Like, that would put them on six, which is even with the Steelers. Which and is, there are people who secretly rooted for the Ravens in a Super Bowl not too long ago just so that San Francisco wouldn't be able to have six. I know I did. I know the group of live friends that we have in the back hanging out with us here at Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview. Uh, we all rooted for the Ravens a couple years ago. Not openly. It was, just, it, was like a real, it was like a really just dirty night out like <laughs> where you're in a room full of people and everybody's up to something that they know they shouldn't be up to. But it's like, you know. It's 6.30 instead of 3.30 in the morning kind of deal. Yeah. But, yeah, like everybody wanted, you know, they didn't want San Francisco to have six. I don't want New England to have six. I don't want New England to have any. They need to get three stripped away at least. They don't, they don't strip things away in the NFL. This ain't college. Damn it. <laughs> All right, Gene, who are you liking this weekend? Who do I think is going to win or who do I want to win? Yes. Uh, I, I dislike both teams and fan bases immensely, uh, but I dislike the Patriots more. And I do have some friends that are from Philly, so I'll Fly, Eagles, fly. Fly, fly Eagles, man. fly. Let's get it. Uh, now, here's a uh, fun uh, Super Bowl fact that there has been three previous quarterbacks uh, to go and play in the Super Bowl that were the backup quarterback at that time. Now, this is the fourth time with Nick Foles coming in as the backup to Carson Wentz. The previous quarterbacks were Doug Williams, mm. uh, Mark Rippon, and Jeff Hostetler. Now, here's the other fun fact is that all these quarterbacks are from the same division in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And also, they're all from like the late 80s and early 90s. Well, except for the new one, yes. Except for well, yeah, Foles. Foles but... right. So I like the, the way that this is going to line up, that there's history on the side that the backup quarterback from the NFC East comes in and wins the Super Bowl. That's, that's what I want to see. I, the Hostetler game was one of the first Super Bowls that I ever really like paid attention to. Um, and I, I, I just remember that being like a compelling story. I was like, oh, that's a really, you know what I mean? Like, I'm... I'm going to pull for the Giants because he's a backup quarterback. And I didn't even know that he had, like, a history at both Penn State and West Virginia. Yeah, he's a West Virginia boy. So He, he lives down in Cheat Lake. It's awesome. His house, oh, is, cool. beautiful. His house is beautiful. It's great. Um, been to you've been, you've been to Jeff Hostetler's house? Well, whenever your dad does some work down that way and I get to drive by it whenever I was with him, you know, it's fun. Gee, that's awesome. Yeah. I also, we almost had another guest on this morning, uh, but unfortunately he was... Jeff Hostetler? No, no, <laughs> oh, no. Man. Actually, he's in Florida. That's actually um, offensive coordinator for the Steelers. Randy, Get him on the phone. Co Coach Fickner. Yeah. I uh, emailed him this week and talked to him to see if he wanted to come on the show. He was totally down for it, except that he's still in Florida still on vacation. Well, so he'll be back Monday, so we can go ahead and do that later. We got we to gotta get a studio down there. <laughs> There's no reason that the Steelers OC shouldn't have like a bold sports like micro studio in his house. His vacation home. True. I, I think mean, everybody should have a studio. Yeah. It's just like the Rooney Complex, but in Florida. Awesome. So we have Gene over here hanging out. He is the food and beverage director at Penn Brewery. 
Penn Brewery, uh, for those of you that don't know, is uh, Pittsburgh's oldest brewery at this point in time. Were they uh, 1986, Gene? Correct. 1986. Um, Bring your traditional old world German brews. And you guys have, um, in the last few years, have come along into the craft beer scene and have been brewing some one-offs and so forth that are available only at the brewery, correct? Correct. So a uh, little history. The uh, brewery was opened uh, back in the 1800s by German immigrants. Um, so they germ- made German-style beers, obviously. Um, but over the past uh, three or four years, we've gotten a little bit more aggressive with some of the popular flavors and styles that the kids really like. Double IPAs, New England IPAs. Uh, we have an oyster stout coming out for Valentine's Day. That's cleverly titled "The Shellfish Lover." Ooh, <laughs> where'd you get the oysters from? I'll have to ask Nick, but I think he got them from Woolies. Okay, so using well, the oysters aren't from Pittsburgh, but Correct. they're through a Pittsburgh local provider. Yep, which is awesome. Yeah, we don't do. have oysters in the river. No, not not that not I the know one, of. Not the ones you want to eat. That's for sure. <laughs> So what do you have in the works? We, we know the brewery down at the base of Troy Hill in uh, Spring Garden, Deutschtown mm-hmm. neighborhood. Um, you guys have a lot going on in the works. What do you, what do you have going on? Uh, a couple of projects currently underway. Um, first and foremost is a, a brew pub uh, spinoff at the airport in the Air Mall in the A concourse, which uh, might, you might know it as the Party Wings where Southwest resides. <laughs> um, we're very close to opening on that. Um, the construction is finished. The electric, electrical is finished. We actually tap beers, um, but we're waiting on uh, furniture, liquor license, and sign. So hopefully by uh, we'll have a firm date middle of this week as to when we're going to be open and serving beer. Now, are we able to get to the Penn Brew Pub if we're not flying? If you get a day pass, which uh, is uh, the first, I think Pitt was the first airport, or is the only airport in the country right now allowing people to go in and shop. Uh, there's a desk on the on the ticketing uh, level where you can get a pass for the day and go in and shop and hang out and drink our beer. That's a great time. I remember when the uh, airport first opened and that was before the Robinson area blew up and mm-hmm. they had the mall and they had the Robinson Town Center, but they had the air mall and they had a Macy's in there and there was a Victoria's Secrets and there was a Barnes and Noble and so forth. Uh, what, what's all still out there now besides you guys uh, that, that would, other than going to get drawn to drink good beer mm-hmm. uh what else can we hang out and do out there so there, there are a handful of retailers um probably actually several dozen uh your requisite sunglass hut um there's a uh, armani exchange there's a, a um what's the the high-end electronic toy place for grown-ups apple like a brookstone, <laughs> brookstone. yeah <laughs> There's a Brookstone um, or something. Sharper that, image? You know, something gone. like that. I think but it's a Brookstone. It wouldn't surprise me if there was still a sharper image at the airport because, well, I haven't been to the airport in a while. I need to get out there, drink some beer, do some shopping. Bring it. Yeah. Definitely. And then you have something else uh, going on uh, in town. So, yeah, a couple well. other things that we're really excited about. One is the uh, the First Avenue Tap Room when the uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania changed the laws to allow grocery stores and gas stations to sell beer uh, that essentially hurt brewers because people are buying six packs and 12 packs instead of cases. So they allowed, uh, they threw a clause in there that allowed um, breweries with the the kind of license that we have to do additional tap rooms uh, and up to two. So you can take your license and go anywhere in the Commonwealth and sell your beer or any beer, wine and liquor made in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So we're uh, building a 35-seat tap room on First Avenue down by the lawyer's row. Um, that is in uh, design review with the ACHD, and uh, we're shooting for hopefully an April opening for that. That'd be awesome because I actually work in town, uh, and it's not far from where I work. I can, like, hop right over there after work, have a quick beer, yeah, and then jump on the trolley because the trolley is, like, two blocks away from there. Yeah, the First Avenue station is about uh, a couple hundred yards downriver. Down the river, I'd like <laughs> it. Yes, uh, Matt. When was the last time you were over at Penn Brewery? Um, I went to a wedding there a couple years ago. <clears throat> um, but wedding reception is—it's it's funny. My my friend always wanted to have an Oktoberfest themed wedding, and this is—he came up with this idea before he even met the woman who he ended up marrying. This was just like his goal, and he developed this plan at Oktoberfest at your brewery. We were having a great time. Nice. And he's like, I would love to hire this band for a wedding someday. And while he didn't get the band, he did get the space. Okay. Um, we, we had like 
a really good time, like a buffet of really good German food, you know, pork and pretzels and just all kinds of like good, good, good stuff, good beer, like nice hall, like real fun. Was that, uh, the, were you upstairs in the Eisenhower mm-hmm. in the brewery? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was nice. Bartender was very, very friendly and, you know, he saw my face a lot that <laughs> night. So it was a good time. Yeah, definitely. Gene, how long have you been with Penn Brewery now? Uh, three and a half years. Three and a half years. It just seems like yesterday. It does seem like yesterday. It does. It was awesome. And and you were a restaurateur throughout your, your lifetime career of working in, in different local companies in Pittsburgh. Yep. And also in and outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, and, and were you in D.C.? I'm from the D.C. area and uh, bounced back and forth a few times uh, with my wife in tow uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s. And then uh, ended up here permanently in 94. Awesome. Mrs. Mangrum is is an awesome lady, especially to be with you as long as she has. She's a very patient woman. She is very patient. You have uh, three lovely children, which are all awesome. You have one that's one that's almost done with high school now. And yeah, my, my youngest will graduate in uh, this spring. Awesome. He's a good kid. He's a Oh, no worries, Mike. Hey, stream. We're gonna if you're, we're still with you. We're gonna restart the system real quick and be up. If everything works. Everything's saved, so everything should be good from what we just did. So that's good. Hey, all right, pick up where you left off. Hey, all right, we're back. Sorry for those technical difficulties, but you know, li- live, uh, oh, live stuff oh, happens. Uh oh. Let's get your audio recording again. Audio, re- <laughs> audio recording. Yeah, we're back. We're uh, live stuff happens. Quite all right. Uh, you know what? We're going to take this moment real quick. There's going to be a blur in the camera. We're going to let Amanda sneak out. She was resetting the Instagram uh, video live recording. It's all right. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be doing any of this. So I have to thank her for that. We also want to go ahead and thank um, Miss Julia over there in the uh, audience. She, Julia Myrick. Julia Myrick. She made a wonderful quiche this morning. A black uh, bean and corn salad. Black bean and corn salad. There's some breakfast brownies as well. Mm-hmm. It's got oatmeal in it, so it's good for you. Yes. And you should eat it. Uh, as well as our uh, our main sponsor here, which is uh, Penn Brewery. We have Gene Mangrum in studio live with us. Uh, also, after the uh, podcast, we're going to have a little delivery uh, from our friends up the street here in Beachview at Slice on Broadway. Uh, they're going to send down a uh, an assortment of pies. Pies. So we don't exactly know what's coming. We just said, hey, can you ha- handle this? And they're like, sure, we'll send you a bunch of stuff. So we're going to have Slice on Broadway. We want to thank you guys uh, with their multiple locations. They're original here on Broadway Avenue in Beachview. Also, they have Carnegie, uh, PNC Park, as well as Mike's. You're looking at me. I want to say East Liberty, but I'm probably wrong. I do this every week. I know. It's East Liberty, Carnegie, PA, down Main Street, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and right here in the good OG location in Slice on Broadway, Beachview, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Thank you, Sorg, for that. That's awesome. I love the alliteration. I, I know. And he closes his eyes perfectly when he does it. Because I read the script on my eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Super Bowl. We have um, New England Patriots, Tom Brady. We know what the guy's capable of. Six round draft pick out of Michigan. Uh, he, has six, he has five Super Bowls. He now has three league MVPs uh, after last night's honor. As much as I want to say, you have to give it to the guy. Dude's good. Um, the system is good. Belichick's a hell of a coach. If if the Browns wouldn't have moved to Baltimore, I believe that Belichick would have brought a Super Bowl to to Cleveland. When you put it that way, it makes the Patriots' run seem palatable. Do <laughs> you imagine if it was like there was a team that you hated as much as the Patriots? For all the same reasons as why you hate the Patriots, but that team happened to be the Cleveland Browns. That would be that would be horrible. As a Pittsburgh fan, that would yeah, be horrible. Yeah, that would be the worst. That, that'd, that, be like, that'd be like angry grandpa-like stuff, you know, like people who remember the Browns rivalry from the 70s. In the 80s. Would, I mean, it was would pretty just, I, I couldn't imagine. I, I, I don't know. I guess it's okay. Like, I just was really thinking, like, it's really remarkable what Brady has done. You're absolutely right, and... Would I be enjoying it more if it was someone from, like, another league, like the other conference? You know, I think so. I mean, if Brett Favre had won, like, you know, five Super Bowls, that would have been awesome. I mean, it wouldn't have been as much of a problem as a Steeler fan because the only way that our season would have ended would have been in the Super Bowl against them instead of losing to them in the playoffs all the time. And it's Brett Favre who is 
he has one Super Bowl, two Super Bowl appearances, one Super Bowl victory. He was the uh, he wasn't even the MVP of that Super Bowl. That was uh, Desmond Howard. That's right, a it was special Desmond, teamer. Special team. He had a punt return, kick return uh, for touchdowns in that game. It was ridiculous. Nine, 96, 96 Super Bowl against uh, ninety six Super Bowl. That, oh wait, they beat the Patriots. That's right, they did. Yeah, that was Drew Bledsoe. That was Drew Bledsoe. I mean, I, the Patriots used to just not be that big a deal. They, they really, they really weren't that good. Like they beat the Steelers once in that fog game. Oh, that um, was a crazy game. That was a crazy game. There was like two thousand and six. No, 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 no. This was like I think Woodson was still on the Steelers. This was way back. This was before Brady. This was Bledsoe. I was at a fog game in New England. Steelers fog, but it was regular season. Well, they, they, I'm sure they have lots of. It, fog it, games. it was regular. It was regular season. The, so. the weather is terrible. They always have fog. Um, I love Boston. I, I do. I, I love, love Philadelphia. I do. But yeah, like I, I can't enjoy the Patriots winning because it's, it's been detrimental to me as a Steelers fan. It has been, and also with their tainted record of spy, Spygate, Spygate, Deflategate. I mean, come on, seriously, two thousand and four. I mean, when they're everybody, not just the Steelers, but everybody that season said that the Patriots were calling out their plays. The defense was calling out the offensive plays. The offense was calling out the defensive motions. Spygate, it's been proven. It's been done. They got fined for it. I mean, Belichick himself got hit, I think, a million bucks. Um, Which is nothing. I mean. Right. They sacrificed draft picks. They did sacrifice draft picks. Oh, like, I mean, they don't need draft picks because they just they just get stealers, like, who just, like, walk off the field. And like, That's two that they got. You know, you walk, you walk off the field at, at Heinz Field and go, like, straight to the airport and – then yeah, you walk. Yeah, you. you walk off the field on Sunday night. You get cut late Sunday night, and you walk to the airport Monday morning and go back to the team that we actually got you from, and then you go get a Super Bowl with them. Yeah. Um, and now that guy is on the Eagles, so he won the Super Bowl last year, and now he's on the Eagles this year. As, he's the uh, leading rusher for the Eagles. He's and they have a hell of a rushing core. You got Legarrette Blunt. They picked up Jay Ajayi uh, mid season from Miami, and then they have Clement in that backfield as well. Uh, now, New England runs uh, backfield with Burkhead, uh, White. Uh, they, they have four running backs. Deion, Deion Lewis. Lewis, the pit guy. Yep. White's out of West Virginia, right? Mm. Yeah. So uh, I, so the backfield, I, I think the running game in this is, it's going to be by committee for both teams, but it's like hockey. Whoever's got the hot hand, whoever's going to have the hot feet, go. That's, that's going to be the carry. I mean, you know Blunt. Ten yards deep, he's going to just bowl people over and and go for it. Well, the 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 Patriots passing game is better than Philly, just stats wise. And you got to consider the three quarters of the season that was Carson Wentz. Correct. So and if Philly has an edge on offense, it's got to be running because they've they've been a better running team all year. They've they've got the same pieces um, in place that help them get those rushing stats. It's not like they're dealing with like backups on on the line. So they, you know they're. That's the the running game is going to be the Eagles' key on offense and on defense. It's their four man, their four man front. Which you got to get to Brady. It's it's something that you know when you're able to do it, you're able to have a chance. You still got to deal with that fourth quarter. Like you don't ever you don't ever count them out. We saw that last year against the Falcons. We saw that two weeks ago against the Jags. That that was not a big lead. Like that was like a two score lead by the Jags. Like. That Atlanta game it's in the fourth was a monumental collapse against the, arguably the best defense in, in football. Yeah. I, ha- I had Jacksonville defense in my fantasy league all year. They put up twenty eight points four times as a defense, and they were only underneath twenty points three times as a defense for fantasy. So that was like a stud roller right there yeah, yeah. for for defense. How did your fantasy go, Gene? Uh, I made to made it to the playoffs in one of my uh, our. Our uh, league at Penn Brewery, I was just awful. <laughs> I think I won three games, but uh, but we had a good time with it. But uh, to your point, uh, the, the the key, I think the entire key of the game is getting to Brady or not getting to Brady. And if you if you can put him on his back a few times early, even if uh, even if you get penalized for it, uh, that that puts that seed of doubt in his brain. That's the only way they're going to be able to beat him. So how about the Philly offense? You have Alshon Jeffrey, you have Zach Ertz at tight end, who is 
phenomenal at tight end position. He was the best tight end all year uh, consistently in the NFL. And then you also have uh, the young guy. Uh, Aguilar. Nice, Nelson Aguilar. Uh, I like those long receivers for Philly. I think, uh, I think that is an advantage if, uh, if Foles can get the ball to him and stay upright. Well, Foles has to stay upright. Now, you got to have that, that uh, you know, the offensive line protecting Foles. The defense for New England is not as good as they've had in the past. They've gotten a lot better over the course of the season. They started off kind of shaky, but they've been pretty stout over the past uh, probably 12 weeks at this point. Pretty much. I mean, how many losses did New England take this year? Three, and they only took one bad one. That was to Miami. Yep. Uh, now, of course, they lost a week before they come to Pittsburgh. So you I mean, lose to Miami. <sighs> it's a division I mean, game. It happens, yeah. Hey, you know what? How did we lose to the Bears this year? How did we lose to the Jags twice? Run defense was terrible against the Bears. Uh, Leonard Fournette's really good. <laughs> He's a monster. <laughs> Run defense monster. was not particularly super great against Jacksonville either time, but mm. Leonard Fournette is really good. Been through five picks in one game. Five picks in one game, uh, a pick and a fumble in another game. And they were still in it. I mean, that was like one of the worst playoff games I've ever watched. Definitely. The way the way they played, and they gave up that many points, and then still managed to put up that many points on just like, just basically schoolyard desperation plays. So, so we we gotta be careful about talking about bad playoff games because our guest uh, Gene and also our sponsor Pembury, Gene's a Cowboys fan. Oh no! Yeah, also Steelers, but. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, the the way the Steelers lost a couple times this year that 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 is life as a Cowboy fan. Dramatic, horrifying breakdowns. So hopefully they change that pass rule and the re- the reception rule because Des Bryant against Green Bay, that was totally a catch in the end zone. You're not going to get any argument from me on that, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nor will I argue. I mean, I've, I've been saying for years like the slow motion replay is ruining the way we watch football because you can never trust your eyes anymore i don't know how you fix the rule though i mean it is is yes. defining a football move i mean the uh there's been so many plays that can go either way and it, if, if you just don't control the ball all the way i don't know how you change that rule to to accommodate that i'm in total agreement it's a bullshit rule but you, this is idealistic but what you do is you say like you know <laughs> if you if you wouldn't have allowed that touchdown on the playground then it wasn't a catch you know, like we're You're asking a, a lot. We never, no, nobody ever had to use replay like playing on the school. Yard. So this, I'm still friends with all those people that I used to play pickup games with. Like you know, it's just there's, there's obviously it's the NFL and there's billions of dollars at stake, so it'll never happen. But yeah, like I, I feel like a catch should be a catch, and you should just know it, and you, you should be able to like celebrate a touchdown and then get on with your life and not wait for ten minutes for them to tell you whether or not it actually happened. So, but I'm definitely still bitter about that Jesse James play. We all are. Agree. We all are. So this week on uh, Golik and Wingo, uh, I wake up, my TV's on pretty much all night, and I wake up to Golik and Wingo every morning. Uh, they had Adam Thielen on from Minnesota, mm-hmm. wide receiver from Minnesota, and they asked him about the catch rule and how they could improve it and so forth. And Adam Thielen came up with the best one. He goes, catch the ball, two feet in bounds, control it, don't drop it, take the hit. Mm. that's a catch and also when it comes to the end zone move because it's different for a running back compared to a wide receiver when crossing the plane right which i which i which that's they my need, issue which they need to check a running back all they have to do is just dive over the goal line once, put the ball in the, the air ball breaks the plane mm-hmm. once, and it, but for a wide receiver they have to maintain possession all the way through through the ground through the ground uh which is is which is where that rule needs to change once you break the play in the end zone it's a touchdown doesn't matter if you're a wide receiver a running back a tight end a quarterback Anybody, you break the play in the end zone. If you're in possession of the ball, if you're in possession of the ball. So what comes first, the the reception or the touchdown? That's the gray area. That is the gray area. That if you're in the back with. of the end zone and you get two feet, and the ball doesn't like move at all while you've got those two feet, then they give it to you. But if you if you're in the middle of the field and you catch the ball and you hit the ground and the ball comes out, it's an incomplete pass. That's, I mean, that, but that's consistent with like the running backs, you know, like once once they're in the end zone, they can drop it, like they they can dive over top and like get pushed backwards and drop the ball. But if it's judged that the ball crossed the plane while they were doing it, they give them a touchdown. So that's that's Sold. the discrepancy. Book it. Done. We're gonna fix it. Tell they're, Roger. They're gonna invite it. They're gonna invite us down to Florida for their meetings and. 
I'm going to try to steal one of Bob Kraft's rings like Putin did. Because <laughs> that was the most baller thing that Putin ever did. Take, a, take, take one and of Bob. He ball. ran the KGB. That's Exactly, ball, man. man. Like, oh, KGB. Yeah, but KGB had like a whole infrastructure in place before he got there. Like stealing the Super Bowl ring was just like pure just audacity. It was, That's it was an in-your-face disgrace. In-your-face. And the fact that we didn't make a big deal about it like just makes me think that like the Patriots are – they're rigging more than football. They're they're rigging everything. Hey, we made a New England style IPA called Cheater Juice just for <laughs> this Super Bowl. Oh my goodness! I, I saw that on the Untapped um, mm -hmm. when it popped up. Says new beer Untapped, and it was Cheater Juice. It was a, any, <laughs> any any IPA, which was I'm like that's awesome. I was like you know I was like that had to be all Gene Mangrum. I had some help. My uh, bar manager Keller Midden actually sh shared a meme with me that has Tom Brady as Beetlejuice, <laughs> and if you look it up, it's uh, Cheetle Juice, and it's pretty adorable. Ah, uh -huh. so we just took that and ran with how, it. How is Keller doing? He's a good dude. He's a good dude. Good dad. Takes care of his kids. Works hard. Shows up. Is he your Is he your day to day eyes and ears at the brewery? Uh, for now, yeah. He's uh, he's tasked with making sure that uh, they don't burn it to the ground while I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't break it. Wait, 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 wait! You you gave that to Keller to do that? It's crazy, right? Oh. I have a really good team. Um, my culinary team is outstanding. Uh, executive chef uh, Jim Dillon has done some amazing stuff with uh, with the food product there, and it's super consistent. Uh, portions are great. Never, uh, we never have any issues with the food. Um, your buddy Derry's running uh, running the line at the, the brewery right now, and doing a great job with that. And uh, just uh, we've we've built a really good team for what we're trying to do. So the momentum's there, the, the staff is there, the product's there. It's it's a it's, it's a fun time to be part of it. Excellent. Uh, so beer garden, yes. Do you still have all the tables and chairs out? So when we have that random seventy degree day in February in Pittsburgh, that's a fact. We that's awesome. And you can bring your dog. And you can bring your Ooh. dog friendly on the beer garden. Yep. I, my buddy in the back, Josh Brown, his eyes and ears just poked up because he has a lovely young lady at home that he loves to go out and walks with and so forth. So he can take her down to the beer garden. Not his wife, his dog. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Dude, live studio audience trying to, you know. Yeah, you know, but his I was wonder where you're going too. I just you know. yeah. His, now he has, he has two dogs at home. One's completely his. The other one I think is his wife Jess's dog that is more hers. Mm. So, you know, dog friendly uh, beer garden patio. And yep. what summertime events do you have coming up uh, that are outside? Uh, are you guys still on the uh, on the bicycle ride? Still on the bike ride. Um, we're we're right adjacent to the. Uh, um, Route 28 bike trail and the river trail. So it's a, it's about a one mile walk to PNC Park if you have occasion to go down there and watch fireworks. Because <laughs> we ain't watching there. baseball. There's I nothing else we're seeing oh, down there. Yeah. I feel yeah. so bad for the players. Um, but uh, another thing about the beer garden, we have uh, we've got uh, lagering caves. So back in the 1800s, the uh, the Germans that that built that area, you you know there wasn't indoor plumbing. So if you wanted to lager beer, you just they dug a hole in the side of the hill and stopped when it got to 55 degrees year round um and we're we're looking at uh opening them up for some production and some uh some education stuff it's awesome. pretty cool it's really cool that is a good time and and the thing with the brewery is it's still that belgian block out there on the on yeah, the beer garden the actual so. beer garden it's it's uh it's trip it's an easy trip if you're wearing high heels mm. steve um, <laughs> I, I i had a friend once who was One on time crushes in college. We, we had to tell her that like she couldn't come to oktoberfest it's like you're not it's not a crutches friendly. But it's not, <laughs> but it's a great time. I mean, we we always have fun there. So Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest is a blast. Uh, and and with our studio audience here, uh, there's a bunch of these guys that go down there. And I'm sure Gene, you've probably seen on the Facebook and the Twitter that has been tagged from Penn Brewery <laughs> during Oktoberfest of the Tower of yes. uh, Milk Jugs. Yep, those are those guys behind you. Not surprised at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we purposely don't clean that table until the end of the night, just to just to marvel at their consumption. I, I may or may not have been involved in that at one point in time as well. No, uh, I'll, I'll say, too, the tables are sturdy. I've, I've seen plenty of people standing on the top of the tables. Doing no, no Bill's Mafia issues here. No, no, nobody. Well, I mean, this is Pittsburgh. Like, it's, it's more about loving. You know, we don't we don't throw each other through tables, <laughs> you know, unless you earn it. And you, you got to earn it and you got to be wearing something other than black and gold. <laughs> like a Patriots jersey yeah. at Penn Brewery. Good. It happens. Yeah, we're we're not far from where that Patriots fan like got arrested for throwing rocks at the tee. 
<laughs> yeah, that <laughs> is the true. Last, the last time the Pats were in town. That is true. Uh, they were in town. Uh, so what's funny about when the Pats were in town in December, my boss is a New England guy. And um, he kept walking up behind me all day going, Brady's better than Ben. <laughs> Your boss sounds like a peach. And um, and I, at one point, I looked at him and was like, I was like, sir, I was like, we have a lot of steps in this restaurant. I was like, I can trip you down them. And he kind of smiled and laughed. And I, smiled, <laughs> and I kind of smiled and laughed. And I'm like, wait, he controls my schedule, so I might not want to do that. Mm. Um, but I also asked him. Just take a picture of the schedule with your phone. Then trip him down the steps. <laughs> then when someone, then whoever takes over while he's in the hospital says like, "Oh, Steve, I, I like, I don't have any shifts for you," and you'd be like, "But wait, but what about these hours?" Yeah, it's, yeah, right, totally, I could do that. that. But don't but, trip your boss. Don't trip anybody. Nah, it's not a good time. It's not. But whenever they came into town, I talked to a buddy of mine that um, works at the West, End, and I says, "Hey, when are the Patriots coming?" And he says, "Between three fifteen and three forty-five. So I was like, "Typical." I was, I, was, I was working a double that day, so I'm like, "All right." Can I get down there and hide in the bushes with an asp and pull a Nancy Kerrigan on Tom Brady? Then I sat there and thought about it, and I'm like, well, let me call my city cop buddies first and find out what's going to happen <laughs> if this goes down. And my city cop buddy says, you know what? You would get arrested. Um, we would actually have to take you to jail. But we'd expedite you through the process. You'd be out in plenty of time before kickoff, and we'd probably start a GoFundMe page to pay the fines. So and they'd let you leave out the front door of the station to like a hero's welcome. I, I would hope so. You know what I mean? Like if you're like a bad perp and like they, there's too many people coming to like get you, like they'll, they'll sneak you out the back. But well, if you're that bad of a perp, you, you they, just they would they would inside. be like they would they would actually hold you. They would be like, don't leave until like the fast part of Renegade starts. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd have Fernald walking out like. <laughs> <laughs> and like just be going nuts like, people would love you but yes it, it would be assault and you can't do that so i mean the other thing about assaulting brady's knee is that like he's, he does all that like new age like health stuff and you'd probably have to like watch his knee regenerate like the terminator like before your very <laughs> eyes and that'd be real demoralizing that'd be like any other time he takes the ball with you know four and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter and you're like here we go again <laughs> seen this movie before seen this movie before it's called terminator 2 so uh, after we're all done here at uh sorgatron media studios i think we need to make a stop over at sam's um because i'm going to look into stuff right now patriots are a four and a half point favorite uh money line uh is the eagles they're 100 and uh it's 155 on the eagles and it's 175 on the pats over under is 49 that's the odds for the game itself so here's me as if I'm putting money on this. You're going to tease it? I was thinking of teasing it, but I'm also thinking about Eagles and the points. I think the Eagles, in the event that New England comes along and wins with a Brady rush down the field in the last two minutes of the game, it's only going to be a three point. I like your thought process. So four and a half points. I mean, I, I think you take the Eagles and the points on that. And with 49, I kind of want to take the under. It's hard to argue with that. Yeah. Um, money line's just no. I, I don't touch money line. That's, that's so 175. 100 wins 155 for the Eagles? Yeah. I can, I can think of a lot better ways to give away $100. <laughs> 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 yeah. To me. Thank you. Yeah. No. Uh, also, uh, the odds on now, now, Super Bowl is pretty much the only game that you can bet all the fun prop bets. Which I'm reading through some of these, and it's kind of ridiculous. Like odds to win Super Bowl MVP, you got to lay a hundred to win. A, you got to lay a hundred to win a hundred and ten on Brady. Uh, Foles is three twenty five. Uh, Gronkowski is nine hundred. So you got to lay nine hundred to win a hundred on Gronkowski for MVP. For MVP, that's crazy. That's everyone loves Gronk. That's so backwards. Yeah. Well, I guess because if Gronk has a big game, like Brady's feeding him the ball. Of course, and but you got to like the, uh, the who's the running back the Patriots have that comes in and scores. That's all he does is score touchdowns in in the postseason. Uh, White, well, they're, yeah, White, uh, White, Burkhead, White, Burkhead, Hogan, they're all on here. Uh, didn't White have two touchdowns last year? He did, and didn't score all year. James White's at four at four thousand. Lay a hundred to win four thousand. That's money well spent right there. Not bad. Malcolm but Malcolm Butler is uh, lay a hundred to win ten grand. Wow! But the odds the odds of that happening now twice that's legal, in a right? Lifetime. You can do that. You can just walk down the street here in Beachview and 
make that way probably more. in Beachview. <laughs> definitely in Beachview. I, I, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's somewhere in Beachview where you can the, do that. The Alpines down the street on the left. Yes. Uh, you know, but but Sam's and Dormont's my favorite spot to do this. Uh, uh, oh, uh, you got to lay uh, la, see, la 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 la. <laughs> you, you lay lay 105 to win 100 on the heads or tails. Yep. What's the over and under on holding calls on the penalty on the Patriots? See, Gene's been big on this holding call penalty deal. Uh, that's why I brought the bourbon this morning because I owed him a bourbon because I lost a bet to him that is a fact. on the Eagles Dallas game. When he's he puts it out on the Facebook mm. and says, "Here's the over under two, you know, holding calls uh, for this game." And I says, "I'll take the over on that." Well, yeah, I lost. So I owed him bourbon, so that's why yeah. I brought bourbon. I think I had that at one five, but I've had the Patriots at zero point five for the entire postseason, and they haven't gone over once. What's right. going to happen is they're actually going to call holding on Harrison for the first time ever. When when Harrison played for the Steelers, like it was like, what was it like a maxim like, you know, every play they're holding Harrison, they never call it. Oh, well, so like, now that he's on the Patriots, they're going to be like, oh well, we can't, you can't do that. That's holding. So they're going to call it. So there's going to be Eagles. a lot of holding calls. Yeah, they're going to call it on the Eagles for holding Harrison coming around the coming around the edge on that right. on that pass block. Over under on first downs by penalty. Does that exist? I'm sure I'll get there. <laughs> I'm sure there's a whole yeah. list of stuff here. We got the uh, uh, printed out the prop sheet, the uh, pass interference uh, offense. Why print it out? I got an iPhone. Uh. You know, um, over under uh, two minutes is uh, lay a hundred to win one twenty uh, for the national anthem. How can you bet on that? I'm I'm sorry, but I have a problem with that. It's pink, right? It is pink. But how? What's to prevent pink from like betting the over and then like drawing out one of those drawing notes. out one of those notes? You know what I mean? Like it's the easiest riggable bet in all of sports. <laughs> Also, the other one with pink is it is um, lay a hundred to win four hundred, or you lay seven hundred to win a hundred for no, uh, for yes if she says Eagles before, during, or after she sings the national anthem. That's because hard because she's, she's a Eagles huge, she's a huge Eagles, Eagles fan. fan. Yeah, she's from like Bucks County. Yeah, okay. she's yeah, yeah, she's from Bucks County. And like that that's hard. I don't know if that's ever happened that like a, a professed fan of a team has sung the anthem at, at a game, but that would be so hard not to do. That's I mean, I I, I would I'd, I'd get booed, but I I wouldn't even sing the anthem. I'd just sing Fly Eagles Fly. <laughs> you definitely get booed. <laughs> <laughs> Except by everyone in Philly. Yes. <laughs> that's uh we have uh, another bet you can take will any scoring drive take less time than it takes Pink to sing the national anthem. So 2 minutes. Yes. Yes. It's, uh, you, you're, you're laying 100 to win a buck and a half. There'll and be a splash play or two during this game. It'll be the Patriots, and it'll happen in the fourth quarter. How many clips will be shown from Super Bowl 39 during the broadcast? The over-under is 2.5. Uh, who that was, was 39? The, that was Eagles, that was Pats. The, Terrell Owens yeah. era. I want footage of McNabb puking. Yes. There, oh, wait. Or it doesn't count. There's one in the, I saw earlier there's one in here about how many times I talk about McNabb puking. Uh, <laughs> they won't enough because like they're, they're going for a wider audience. They're, they're not targeting specifically to the puke fans out there. Over under 1.5, how many times will Dynasty be said during the broadcast? Over. Definitely. Mm. Uh, how, many wardrobe, how many times will wardrobe malfunction be mentioned during the broadcast? At least once. 2.3 million. Well, it's Collinsworth, right? It's, yeah. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> How many times will Giselle Bunchen be uh, shown on TV during the broadcast? Over under is 1.5. She's, she'll be in a box, I take it? I'd yeah, go over probably. on that. How many times will Tom Brady's age be mentioned? Let's go back to that. It depends on how hard Brady gets hit early. Oh, but uh, only like he gets times. jacked up a couple times. And, and they show her like this? Yes. Yeah. They'll show, they'll show her at least twice. I'd have to go over on that. And then, uh, let's see, uh, temperature outside. How many times will that be mentioned in broadcast? The temperature, minus 30. It's skiable. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Skied it. You know, skiing it tomorrow. Yeah, no minus, minus 30 wind chill. That's chilly. And thankfully, Minnesota's indoors again. It's really cool how they're having everything inside the Mall of America. I've been watching all the ESPN stuff all day, the roller coaster in the background, you know, all week long. Stephen A. Smith at the Hard Rock. Stephen A. Smith is one of my favorite guys to watch in the morning. He, he He's very loud, obnoxious, boisterous, and you either love him or hate him. You, watch so you have him. nothing in common with him. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Not at all. Nothing. Um, let's see. Who will be mentioned first during the broadcast, Robert Kraft or Jeff Laurie? Kraft. Ooh. He's the most – he's the most – famous owner he i mean he puts he really gives jerry a run for his money in terms of yep 
high profile, you know. They're homies. They are homies, and, you know, his whole background of being, like, a real New England guy who bought the team. You know, the media loves Kraft, whether you like him or not. Uh, who will be shown first on TV during the singing of the National Anthem, Tom Brady or Nick Foles? Brady. People don't even know what Nick Foles looks like. As a, <laughs> as a director, Mike, would you, would you show a guy that no one even recognizes, or would you show the most famous athlete in the world? Brady? Yeah. Brady. <laughs> Uh, here it is. Is uh, uh, will Donovan McNabb's vomiting incident from Super Bowl Thirty Nine be mentioned during the broadcast? You got to lay a hundred to win one seventy, or you lay two fifty to win a hundred on a no. Collinsworth can't leave that alone. And G- Gene just loves <laughs> Collinsworth, <laughs> like everybody else in, I guess land of watching football. I, I don't even think he's like that. Like everyone thinks he's a hater because he, you know gives opinions on Steeler games. I don't think he's a hater. I just, I just he's just annoying. He's just a tool. I just don't want to hear him. You know, like, I just, well, I don't hate, know. His bias against the Steelers and Cowboys, for that matter, is, is palpable. Yeah. Well, the, the reason he's biased against the Steelers because the Steelers, he, he was a bungle, and then he was a giant for a while, which is why the Cowboys, where it's well, why he's biased against the Cowboys. Makes sense. You know, he finished his career with with the Giants, and he only went to that one Super Bowl that was uh, Cincinnati against the Niners. Is that 1988 or 1989? Somewhere around there. It's before my time. It's before your time. (laughs) Gene's the youngest guy in the room. (laughs) Will any quarterback throw for 400 yards or more in the game? But what's the odds? Uh, It's a yes for plus 300, no minus 500. I have this sneaking feeling that it's going to be like a Doug Williams where he just lights, Foles just lights him up in the second quarter for four touchdowns and 370 yards in the quarter. I like, That's what I'm hoping for. I like where your head's at. Yeah. I like where your Growing head's up at. in the D.C. era, I remember watching that Super Bowl against the Broncos and not really caring, but all my friends were Redskins fans. Um, so I was at a Redskins house, and uh, the, the, it was just jaw-dropping what he did to that defense. He just shredded them for 15 minutes, and that was the end of the game. Was that 83? Something like that, yeah. Doug Williams just went off. Was, was that Doug that Williams? Was the Smurfs. D- Doug Williams took over for um, Joe Theismann, right? I believe so. Because uh, Lawrence Taylor from the Giants lit Joe Theismann's mm-hmm. life up, and then Doug Williams took compound over. Compound fractured him. Went to, went to the su- super compound fracture. So gnarly. Went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> One of the best injury reels to watch oh, on TV. I don't watch that. If you're gory, if you like gore, I, I mean, it's horrible. It ended Joe Theismann's career, but I mean, um, yeah, well, he's he's fortunately he's got broadcasting chops. So. Does and also he wore number three at Notre Dame. He was mm-hmm. one of the great quarterbacks to wear number three. Yeah, and he changed the way his name is pronounced so it would rhyme with Heisman from th- as part from of Thiesman? his Heisman caves. Yeah. Joe, yeah, Thiesman. Yes, I, I never knew that. I didn't believe that. Like it took me a long time to come around on that. I just thought it was like more anti Notre Dame propaganda, but apparently <laughs> yeah. that really did happen. By all, all accounts, a very decent fellow. Yes. Have you have you met him? Uh, when I was a kid, uh, he was signing autographs at the PX. And my mom took me for an autograph, and I was like, eh, I don't really want – I didn't like the Redskins. I was a Cowboy <laughs> fan, but uh, and my mom told Joe, says, he thinks he's too old for this. So he signed it. Gene, you are never too old. <laughs> so I'm never too old. So, 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 that's so, so, so is that your mantra for life now? You're never too old? Among other things, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that works. You know, Joe Gibbs, I mean, he took three teams to the Super Bowl with three different quarterbacks and won all three of them. And, again, two of them were fill-in guys. They were backup guys with Doug Williams and Mark Rippon was a backup guy. Yep. Um, so here's Quality the organization under that ownership, not so much under Snyder. Yes. Very reminiscent of something happening locally. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow we're not going there today no no <laughs> no that that that's for a whole that we could spend days on a podcast on that bs right there um will there be a flea flicker attempt today yes there was two last weekend right or the in the championship weekend. yes there was there were one in each game uh so gene you're gonna lay 100 you're gonna lay 100 to win a buck 35 so on that. in all right brady loves flea flickers because he's a big slow old guy who can't take a hit. <laughs> and so he's like, I want to throw a pass, but I'm going to hand you the ball first so they try to tackle you, and then I'm, c- I'm clear and free, and I can throw it like 40 yards downfield. That's for Brandon Cooks to be open, hopefully. Mm. Oh, um, Brandon Cooks finally showing up. Thank you so much now that my fantasy season's over. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. There it is. How many times uh, will the Rocky statue in Philly be shown during the broadcast? Once. What's the over and under? One. So that's a push. They'll show it once. Definitely, at least once. Uh, how many times will they show uh, 
a cheesesteak being made in Philadelphia? Not if, but will it be Pat's or Gino's? That's the next one. Is okay. that's the next one? So they had it's 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 one point five is the over under on if they show a cheesesteak being made in Philly, and the next one is it is um, a one point five for Gino's or Pat's. I always liked Ishka Bibble's sandwich better, but that's yeah. That's I like I'm a place. Tony Luke's guy, right? So Jim's also on South Street. I mean, I'm a Pat's guy. I, I, I edit that out. That sounded like I'm rooting for the Patriots. I like I, Pat's King of Steaks. Pat's King of Steaks, I believe, is see. I like Geno's because I'm not a whiz guy. I like the pro. I like oh, the, I like the yeah. can. You got to get with the, the cheese whiz on the flat top. I like the <laughs> sass. I like the Just attitude. I, I like being treated like a piece of garbage when I'm ordering my food. So I go to Pat's. And how's things at home these days? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's the other one. What color will the liquid be that is poured oh, on the Gatorade. game-winning coach? You have lime, uh, lime green, yellow, lime green, yellow. Why is that all one? I thought that was – that's multiple Lime colors. green is technically yellow, I okay. think. Orange. I don't want to start a black and yellow versus black and gold fight right now, but – I'm saying gold. So, and then you have orange, red, clear water, blue, or purple. Purple drank. Purple drank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, what are the that, odds on purple drank? That is, that is a po- check. Well, first of all, I think he gives every episode on the lean of, of every post game press conference a little bit. Well, you, you do not have that little enthusiasm for life unless you're on some sort of opiates. <laughs> <laughs> Will Nipplegate be said during the broadcast? For sure. Collinsworth about, said the actual word Nipplegate it. or like just reference to Wardrobe Nipplegate. malfunction. Wardrobe, Wardrobe malfunction. malfunction. I don't think Collinsworth is clever enough to come up with like a new name for it. Yeah, so. the, the, the word here in, in uh, parentheses is Nipplegate. So yeah. it has to be that word. Collinsworth, I don't think maybe though. Al Michaels would say Nipplegate because, you know. He doesn't care. <laughs> what, <laughs> what are you going to do? Zero Fs to give. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you going to do? Fire Al Michaels? I mean, come on. What color will Justin Timberlake's shoes be when he begins his halftime show? You have your choice of white, black, brown, beige, red, blue, green, and yellow. So well, I if, guess I won't go to the bathroom for halftime. Yeah. Well, well, there will be time. for. There's a built-in bathroom break. Is there? They don't oh, want okay. you to miss well, the well, show. Here it's, the, half, the Super Bowl halftime is like 45 minutes. Well, so here like, at Sorgatron Media Studios and beautiful Beachview is holding a Super Bowl commercial watch party tonight to where you go to the bathroom while the game's on. Good call. That's cool. That's you, here. That's the sword. It's the big game commercial watch party. Just go get your snacks and bathroom breaks while the uh, games are going on. You know, sit down, watch the commercials. The fun part, <laughs> especially this year. Will there be beer? Uh, There's some still left in the fridge. Cheater juice for everybody. <laughs> for all my friends. <laughs> So that is the end of the prop bets that are going on in Vegas, and that was via Bellagio. So, so you know it's accurate. Yes. There's so many riggable bets, though. I mean, like, if you're the producer, you just say, like, show the Rocky statue again, you know, and then you cash in. <laughs> or, you know. I'm sorry to interject, but I want to remind people that there were bets in Las Vegas for the WWE Royal Rumble last weekend. Yeah, but that's like Which a real scripted. sport now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to have a conversation with you after this. No. <laughs> For somebody that does a lot of wrestling shows and goes to a lot of wrestling, I would think Sorg would be the one to know that it's completely real. It's don't, very real. Don't, uh, you know. You can't fake that stuff. Yeah, don't crush the hopes. Those are gifted athletes. I mean, the, the amount guys. of passion. Like, why, why would so many passionate fans, like, rally around something that's not real? You know? That's, high, that's what I'm drama. saying, man. Like, pe- you know, money talks. You know what? And uh, Ronda Rousey signed to go to WWE. Mm-hmm. And that's a real sport. MMA is real. MMA is real. Uh, Gene, Marty, yes. Marty Gras, what do you got going on this year? So we got the uh, Funky Fresh Boogaloo. The, uh, the band is the Funky Fly Project. Uh, these teenagers. Uh, and they have uh, a, a, four or five pieces. Uh, super jammy. Um, came highly recommended by a man whose opinion music, musically I respect. Uh, uh, Jason Caligari of Jimbo and the Soup Bones. Oh, super guess. shredder of a guitar player. Jimbo's but, an awesome dude. We saw him be. at the brewery a couple times, and we've also seen him at the Millville Music Festival yep. last year. He was there. So Jason recommended these guys. I reached out to him. Um, I've not seen them except for some of their social media stuff, and uh, but I'm really looking forward to that. They're gonna they're gonna light it on fire, 
and we'll be releasing our uh, our Märzen at the same time. Now, what what style of beer is Märzen? Märzen is a Märzen. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Vienna Lager style of beer, um, not unlike it's. It's kind of like a, a brighter Oktoberfest, if, okay. if you want to do that. A little bit crisper to har- uh, hopefully uh, harbinger spring into coming. That sounds good. Early. Make a lot. We made if, uh, if beer can harbinger tanks. spring. Do it. This is my time, man. This is this is good. I'm, I'm looking Je- forward Jean's to it. Jeans a skier. Jeans oh, a skier, and he's okay. a, and he's a fat bike rider, and he's a roadie bike rider in the summer, and you're also a, a trail bike rider yep. any time of the year. And a dog walker. And the dog. dog I, I saw the pictures of your dogs in the creek yesterday. Um, Only one was in the creek. She, you can't keep a Labrador out of the water. It can't be yeah, done. Yeah. What, what was your thing like? Twenty degrees, and she's ninety years old and still wants to play in the creek. Yeah, she's fourteen. Uh, she's a, the, a sweetheart, and uh, the other two kind of hang out and make sure she's doing okay that's awesome um matt if you had your last hundred dollars today and you had to place bets where are you going mm, can i split the hundred it's your last hundred bucks split up however you want <laughs> um because i'd probably just take it to like a three card poker table <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not wasting my last hundred dollars on a rigged NFL game. Sorry. I'd go get a couple tacos, <laughs> and then put fifty on the coin toss and call it a day. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty bucks worth of tacos. That, that Eagles a- cover. Eagles cover seems like everybody's behind that. Everybody's on board with Eagles cover in the spread. E- Eagles cover because the spread. every everybody that I've heard in the past two weeks brings up. You know, that the Patriots don't win Super Bowls by blowouts. You know, they lose close Super Bowls. They win on fourth quarter drives. You know, they need monumental comebacks to get there. Um, monumental collapses by the Falcons. Oh, I, I like, so don't feel, get you started. Oh, that's unbelievable. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I, I was texting with a friend during that game, and he, uh, so he the- paused it at halftime to put his kid to bed. <laughs> and then I was like, I can't text him back to tell him about all this crap that's going on because he's going to try to like watch it on the DVR. So I was just like, just hit me up before you go to bed. <laughs> so I wait like I wait like two hours. It's just like so, effing Brady. <laughs> so so last last year during that Super Bowl, I was at my uh, buddy Nick's house. Who's here in studio? We do a nice big Super Bowl party uh, every year. And I swear the only reason I get invited is because I cook. Um, which is probably they're all shaking their head. Yes, uh, <laughs> um, that's one redeeming value. Yes, yeah, is one redeeming value. <laughs> um, and and typically I don't really drink while I cook during the game because I want to keep the I want to keep the food on point. <laughs> there. Ain't nobody I, buying that dog. <laughs> so what I mean by don't really drink is I have like a few beers while I'm cooking, but I want to make sure the food's on point for everybody. After I'm done cooking, the food's out. All bets are off. Now, last year, I had no intentions on getting drunk. But then the but. fourth quarter happened, and my buddy Nick had a big old flask of whiskey sitting around. And the next thing I know, I woke up at home in the morning, and I'm like, where's all my shit? Uh, <laughs> so, and I had to call another buddy of mine and be like, did I leave it in your car? And he's like, I think it is. And then he forgot which car he had. He's like, no, it's not in my van. I'm like, dude, we had your car. He's like, oh, we had the car. So there's that. So <laughs> what is on your Super Bowl menu? today you know what um i'm not entirely sure my my oldest daughter jessica was cooking all day yesterday um so i'm i have no i don't even know what the kitchen sink looks like right now (laughs) because there's just stuff everywhere i know there's i know there's pie and i know there's some dip and uh, there's going to be kaisers and some cheater juice and we also have a double ipa that we'll get into here in a little bit if there's any of that left did anybody even get into the beers yet i'm pretty disappointed I'm uh, with this group of people. I'm surprised that the y'all better get busy. Jesus Christ, Nick! I'm so yo. Nick is the oh. one. I'm surprised it's not like sitting there with a bendy straw. <laughs> Jesus. So there's a uh, there's a I don't know what the letters are on top. That is a coffee porter. Uh, that's made with Commonwealth Places uh, Papua New Guinea blend. Okay, it's delicious. Um, that is the parking chair Imperial IPA. That is uh, Nick when he made that uh, modeled after Pliny the Elder. Okay. So I think you'll like that a lot if, if you like the Pliny. And the other one is the Cheater Juice. Cheater Juice. Which is the New England style IPA, super cloudy, yummy, juicy. Nice. So uh, the the juice flavors, are is that, a, is that more of a, a lemon 
uh, citrus or is it like a lemon orange papaya? It's, it's like a grapefruit zest almost and a little bit of orange zest. Or, nice. Or orange um, pith. It's delicious. And super, not, not super hoppy, like 45 IBUs, but uh, totally drinkable. Now on the uh, parking chair, the double yeah. IPA, what are we looking at on that uh, IBU-wise? little oh, 75? 88. Okay. It's a big one. It's a big one. Uh, and it's 9% ABV, but it's uh, dangerously drinkable. Uh, <laughs> learned that the hard way. It's like, <laughs> where did I get this hangover? I had three beers. Yes. So um, in, in my beer drinking experience, especially with Eugene, uh, we have done one time at a, a pub up in Mount Washington where we had the dogfish head 60, 90, and 120 on vertical. Yep. And you and I sat there the one night and decided to drink the 120 and also drink some Jameson along with it. It was a great idea. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally great idea. And you know what? You think I would have learned that time with you? No, I did it again later on, like a couple years down the road after that. Where I was drinking Dogfish 120 and Maker's Mark. And, and, and I think I learned my lesson the second time, you know, not to do that. Often you lose time in that situation. A lot of time. And you have, and you have a pissed off girlfriend. So You got to check your account balance on your phone to see where you were. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. No, never. Never. I've, t I, I've totally had, had uh, you know, how did you get home? I don't know. And then they, and then she gets the lift account and says, "Well, you took a lift from Nico's." Okay. Huh. All right. Cool. So we know I was safe about it. Yes. Did Speak, my driver look make sketchy? good decisions, kids. <laughs> Speaking about being safe, it is Super Bowl Sunday. It is considered an amateur night out uh, of one of those throughout the year. Uh, so everybody's going to a house party. Uh, either stay at the house or use Lyft, Uber, uh, public Z trip, transportation. public transportation, uh, so forth to get yourself home. Have a designated driver. Uh, if you're going to local pubs, if you're in Dormont, Beachview, Mount Lebanon, hopefully you can walk home because that's the plan. Mm. I mean, and I also allow extra time to get anywhere because there will be a rush hour at like 530, 5, 530 people go into their parties. Definitely. It's a Sunday, but there, there will be higher than usual traffic volume. And, you know, they're not they're not doing the traffic reports on the news on a Sunday. So I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. There's going to be traffic gonna ins. Be, I, I got a prediction. It is going to be a backup at Edgewood, Swissville at the Squirrel Hill Tunnel. <laughs> on Saturday at 2 a.m. Every day. Every at day. Every, every day. And every p.m. It's yeah. almost as bad as the Schuylkill Expressway. Ooh. Oh, the sure kill. Yep. Uh, the Schuylkill Expressway out there in Philly. You know what? Any time of day. Any time of day. Mm. I will take... Just stopped dead. I'm going to take the person in Pittsburgh that bitches about traffic the most, going through the uh, going through four pit tunnels, going out to Parkway West, Parkway East. Like, I can't take 50 minutes to go to the airport from downtown at 3 o'clock on a Monday. Yeah, I can. Yep. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them on the, on the Schuylkill Expressway at Valley Forge at 7 a.m. and say, see how long it takes you to get to Center City. Yep. It's an hour bike ride because it's 20 miles. But it's probably two hours in a car. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, I love bikes. Or yeah, or or anywhere in DC. D oh yeah, DC on that Beltway. Nuts. Boston. Well, uh, Boston. B Boston's like Pittsburgh and has those narrow roads and they're mm -hmm. one way, and then the next street turns one way, the opposite way. Right. It, it, it's the best way to get around Boston and DC is walking or public transportation. Yeah, but none of this excuses the the sloppy mess that is Route 51. <laughs> South at 88. What a disaster! And they oh, were but it's so much better now. With the, the, it's been imagine decades. how it used to be when they before they had the jug handle. And you know whole... what? Do you know how many times I've missed the jug handle to turn left up whited? Yeah, like almost every time. We're like, son of a bitch, I can't turn left. There's right. only one bar yeah. up there too, and it's closed. Oh, there is. It's way up there. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, Gene's got a nice bar at his house. Mm. I mean, so we can go to his house and and drink. We got people. We got food. You got to sit on the pool. Sit on the deck of the pool. Pool's closed though. I mean, the the bottom part. You can still get on the top if you're that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what's your Super Bowl Sunday plans here after this wonderful live podcast here at Sorgatron Media my, Studios? My, my goal is to survive a live podcast. You're doing a great job and at it. Everything beyond that, I don't know. I mean, you're putting you're putting some food in front of me. You're putting some beer in front of me. It's snowing out. We're doing good. Sorg, how are we doing here on time? We're good? Awesome. 
I know I have in the car. I honestly don't know how long your episodes usually are. <laughs> <laughs> Our episodes range from an hour to two hours, depending on how much we'll pitching and drinking we do. Hours, Depends really. on what episode you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, there's some there's some lost episodes which yeah, there's might, some might be might be condensed into a clip show of some sort. Yeah, I mean, we may have may not have gotten drunk while we podcast. Don't drink in podcasts. But everyone know. drinks in podcasts. Hey, my beer assistant's up. Um, beer assistant, can uh, can I get the uh, the uh, parking chair, the double IPA, please, sir? If you could. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick's like, I'm eating quiche. Leave me alone. <laughs> so you ask him, and they bring you beer. They're like, try- they're like bartenders. I'm trying. The greatest people on earth. Bartenders are the greatest people. On earth. Gene, you started out as like bartender server a thousand years ago. Yeah, a thousand years ago, and you've moved your way into more of the operations side of things. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost as much fun, but I still uh, at peace and at home behind the bar. Would you be able to reach some of that cheater juice, beer assistant? Nice. <laughs> it's the cloudy one. <laughs> It's got less air Must in it be. than all the other beers. That's how you know. Oh it's wow, this juice. is really good. Um, I I pulled the these out, I pulled these out of the fridge. I don't know, probably forty minutes That's ago perfect. now, and now they're a perfect drinkable temperature. Um, I don't like my beer really cold. No, it has to have some uh, some ambiance to it. It does. The, now the Kaiser Pills, which is a phenomenal beer. I know you drink a lot of it. You've you've started your whole. Kaisers are, you know, Super Bowl Kaisers are the best Kaisers, and correct a- after work Kaisers are the best Kaisers, and poolside Kaisers are the best Kaisers. Yes, post bike ride Kaisers are the best Kaisers. Yes, so it's a hashtag best Kaisers uh, movement that uh, your, your girlfriend suggested we run with, and it, it started to pick up some momentum. So, what's the actual hashtag on that? Hashtag whatever whatever your activity like uh, Sorgatron Media Podcast Kaisers are the hashtag best Kaisers. Awesome. There you go. Sorg, you have a Kaiser hashtag today. That's awesome. We're going to get that going out there. Sorgatron Media for Sorgatron Media Kaisers, Super Bowl Sunday. Hashtag are the best Kaisers. Very good. No, just hashtag best Kaisers. Hashtag best Kaisers. Awesome. We'll get that going. Thanks, uh, Amanda, for giving you that to run with it. And this is a delicious looking cheater juice. That is it? a delicious looking cheater juice. That is. I'm going to have to it's get It's cloudy like Belichick's morals. <laughs> <laughs> And so most of ours in the room, too. So <laughs> He will find a way. He will exploit every weakness. He'd be a great military leader. So there also was the uh, one poll in there is, is what color is Belichick's hoodie going to be? Gray. Gray. Yeah. Yeah. So there was gray. I mean, it could be navy, right? Yeah. There was gray, Come blue, on. black. Um, and I think there was white for some reason. And who have the sleeves cut off. Yeah. There was also. To show the guns. There's also will he have the sleeves cut off or on. I mean, he'll he'll do whatever he's allowed to do. I mean, he's Bill Belichick. Are you gonna tell him no? Nope. Did you watch the um, the ESPN thirty for thirty on the two Bills? Nope. I, I'm I've been remiss in my television uh, viewership with uh, everything that's going on, but I've been told that the thirty for thirty product is outstanding. I tried to watch it the other night, but since it was the day of release, uh, it wasn't available on the on-demand. Um, so I'm going to have to get back and watch that. I ended up catching the last five minutes of it, and I'm mad because I only caught the last five minutes. That's Parcells and Belichick? Yeah. I've seen the, uh, seen the ad for it. It's just the time. I mean, I could, I could sit home and watch it, or I could come here and drink beer with you guys. We like it that you came and drank beer with us. Yeah. You know, Gene travels with beer everywhere he goes. We like that. Um, yeah, Kim, my wife bought me a... a, a organizer for the back of my car and half of it holds tools and stuff the other half holds a cooler and it came with the cooler that it goes with so there is always something delicious back there nice. it's a good time of year to be driving around with beers in your car because as long as they're not open you know, <laughs> there it is free refrigeration indeed it is um any final thoughts here on this wonderful super bowl sunday um before we sign off yeah, I got I got a couple things. Um, of course you do. First of all, I there is one Pats fan whose birthday it is today. He's uh, Frank McNamara. He's Julia's grandfather. Lives up in Lexington. Uh, big Pats fan. Not not a Belichick fan though. Um, and it's his birthday today. Ninety two. So I'm gonna wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, happy birthday. Ninety two years old. I hope he I hope he enjoys the Super Bowl. Um, 
you know, I, I had the pleasure of watching a Pats game with him once, um, and it was against the Peyton Manning-led Broncos. So, and, and there was some playoff positioning involved, so it was actually not hard to kind of sort of root for the Patriots just that one time in the man's home, you know. So I want to wish him a happy birthday. Um, I also want to say that I'm officially um, I'm rooting for the Eagles. Uh, shocker. But, um, no, like, uh, let's, let's get behind offensive guard Stefan Wisniewski, central grad. Oh, there it is. The Central High School had to so come out West somewhere. Guy, right? come out. Hey, finally, it's the first time I brought it up <coughs> all year. Yeah, well, he went to Central High School, and there are a bunch Central of... Central Catholic High School. Yeah, 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 and there are a bunch of dirty, cheating Catholic boys. We're not dirty, cheating Catholic boys. He should be on the Patriots. Is there a Central Baptist school? <laughs> not in this town. Maybe, maybe, maybe down south somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in North Carolina. <laughs> I am officially behind the birds. Um, fly, Eagles, fly. Um, Money-wise, I'm totally putting that on the birds to cover and on the under. Um, total for that. And ultimately what I'd like to see happen is there'd be like an implosion in the stadium. I apologize for the random lives that would be lost because of the 80,000 people in the stadium. But, you know, I mean... It, it's. It, I've seen worse things happen. It's not really. Like, You're on a watch list now. <laughs> Nobody like. Uh, aside from the fact that a few of the Philly fans might also be wearing like Flyers gear, which doesn't match at all. Orange and green does not go together. I mean, unless you're the Irish flag, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Um. But yeah, like I mean, like you know, I I I just don't I don't get the hate for the Eagles because like un, unlike you know I'm not a Cowboys fan. They're just another team to me. They're, they're a team that the Steelers play once every four years. The Patriots are the devil. So The devil? The them devil. foosball. That, the devil is playing the foosball. <laughs> Billy Madison. I'm sorry. What's his name? Bobby Boucher. Bobby Boucher. His mom was right. I love my mama. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't see any water boys having an impact on this game, but with the Patriots, you never know. That is true. Gene, your official stance on this? Eagles. Eagles. Eagles by, I'm going to say six. Eagles by six. I think Foles goes off a little bit. I think the, the uh, Eagles front four gets after Brady because they know that that's the only way to beat those guys. you got to put him on his back, and I think that's what's going to happen. Brady on his back. Gene's making bold predictions over here on Bold Sports Live Show. Uh, and we're – about to sign off, we uh, our friends from Slice on Broadway are going to be bringing us down some awesome pizza to get into. Um, Sorg, you have that wonderful voice to do Slice. Why don't you help us out with that, if you can do it again? What do you want? You want the uh, Slice on Broadway? Check them up in uh, Four Corners of Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, it's Carnegie, Beach View, PA, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. East Liberty is their newest location. Please don't kick the door down. So for some reason, the wrestling fans want to do that. Uh, and uh, thank you for supporting us for a good long time on a lot of the Sorgatron Media podcasts, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. And also, Heida Rico from Slice was uh, popped in uh, the chat room for a moment. So uh, so what's up to him? Did we have any, uh, any, any traction in the chat room? And so forth. Anybody asking any stupid questions like, why are you guys doing this bullshit? I got a, I got a hi, Steve. Hi, but there's Steve. definitely been some people popping it in all morning. Awesome. Afternoon. <laughs> it was probably these jagoffs that are uh, well, There you go. There you go. <laughs> these jagoffs are back there. I mean, you know. Uh, you know. So, definitely. Uh, we want to thank Gene Mangrum, uh, food and beverage director at Penn Brewery. Uh, for the it's not just the brewery anymore you got a lot going on so you're kind of taking over the airport you're gonna be doing the the uh, downtown location on mm -hmm. first ave yes and the brewery you're gonna be all over yes that's just multiple uh points of entry for alcohol i like it we all like multiple points. I, of I was just saying that we need more more beer i was just saying yeah more more well like literally honestly downtown um one of my favorite bars downtown, the uh, Courthouse Tavern, is gone. Um, a lot of the places downtown are more geared towards like dining, but sometimes I just want to go have beers. Yep. So I'm looking forward to this. We will, we will have a, a small menu, uh, a very small kitchen, but uh, we, we intend on doing uh, having the food be as good as the beer. Cool. 
Gene, is the downtown location going to be beer only, or are you going to have spirits as well? Uh, great question. Um, we're working with PA Libations. Uh, one of the caveats of the taproom clause in the Commonwealth's law is that uh, you can sell liquor and wine, but it has to be made in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So uh, oh, wow. we, we, we will have a full bar, um, a full wine list, but it's all going to be Pennsylvania products. Which there's a lot of really good Pennsylvania products out there right now when it comes to the um, liquor libations Absolutely. of it. Uh, we have our friends at Wiggle Whiskey that um, do a lot of stuff that we get to go to a lot of events with them. And uh, and right down the street from the brewery is the Wiggle Whiskey Barrel House. The Barrel House, which and their cidery is, is uh, thread, underway also. Threadbare cider, very good stuff. So they um, made a whiskey, they make whiskey with our beer. Yeah, that was the St. Nick. That we did the St. Nick, they did the, the Ozaftas. Uh, which was neighborhood, and then they just did Phil's Shadow with the uh, our Punxsutawney Filsner, which is a clone of our uh, Great American uh, our Great American Beer Festival gold winning Hellas Lager, gold awesome. medal. Yep, gold medal. Then is that the first gold medal? Not for that beer, and not for the brewery. No, that's probably the fourth gold medal for the beer. And uh, I don't know how many golds we at least five, uh, but that's the most recent one. And there's some silvers and bronze in there, as well as the World Beer Cup. Awesome. Uh, so folks out there in Pittsburgh and uh, for those of you watching and listening to us that are outside of Pittsburgh, when you get into town for the Steeler games, uh, head on over to Penn Brewery. It is Pittsburgh's oldest brewery, 1986. Uh, that building's what, 100, 100 and something years old? Once 1850 something, so 175-ish. Yeah. That's Arden. before the Civil War for those of you keeping track. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> You're the youngest one in the room. What are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, we here at Bold Pittsburgh and Bold Sports are going to go ahead and we're all in on the Eagles. Fly, Eagles fly on the road to victory. There you go. Anybody but New England. Uh, yeah, anybody. <laughs> Pretty much is what anybody. it comes down to, really. So thank you very much for listening to us on this awesome Super Bowl Sunday here live at Sorgatron Media Studios. We thank Gene Mangrum from Penn Brewery and the, and the sponsorship that Penn Brewery brings with us uh, with some great beer and some great talk, sports talk. And, uh, of course, you all get to find out all the new, fun, and interesting and exciting things that uh, Penn Brewery has going on and keeping it local. Uh, also, we want to thank Slice on Broadway for sending down a couple pies that we're about to go enjoy as soon as they um, show up here. They're keeping them warm for us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of that. You guys have a wonderful uh, Sunday Super Bowl. Enjoy it, friends, family. This is really what it's all about. Who gives a shit who wins, honestly? As long um, as the commercials are good. The commercials are good. Justin Timberlake better sing some good stuff, too. Budweiser is um, going to make you cry for more than one reason. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. Budweiser makes me cry all the, that AB InBev <laughs> thing. I, I don't. I, that's I a whole nother. That's podcast. a whole nother podcast, and we have friends that do that um, on their podcast with uh, different beer podcasts, and we'll talk about them later. Uh, but uh, enjoy your Super Bowl Sunday. Have a safe, wonderful, fun day. Uh, make sure you're. Um, Drinking responsibly or have somebody responsible for you. <laughs> so that's off. Matt, uh, you and I will get together this week to record our regular show. They won't get to see your smiling faces this time, but we're going to get into some more in-depth Pittsburgh sports uh, with the Penguins, Pirates. I hope I'm smiling. I hope I'm smiling as a result of the Penguins. I am, hope I'm smiling as a result of the Penguins as well as a result of um, the Eagles winning. Mm. Um, so you can check us out later on Bold Sports. Uh on Bold Pittsburgh as well as uh, uh, at Bold PGH Sports on Twitter. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sorg, for hosting us and, and running the show for us. And we will see you all soon. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Drink local, Yins. Drink local.